In the Father, Lord, we love and we thank you for the privilege of being here again. We thank you for each one in attendance. And Lord, as always, as we go further into the meeting, I pray that your will would be done. Give us infinite wisdom and knowledge in every decision that we make. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for the pledge. <coughs> Salute. Pledge. shout out to the Trenton Day Optimist Club. Uh, that's one of our stakeholder groups that have that's always very supportive of our school system. But in the month of February, they seem to be, uh, uh, we keep them busy. They re uh, review our uh, essay contest at each one of our schools. And then they also uh, listen to each one of our uh, contestants that participate in the oratorical contest. Uh, we have a guest with us tonight. Miss Emma Hayes, who placed first uh, in the Trenton Day Optimist Oratorical Contest. Uh, they recognized uh, three individuals that uh, placed in the top three. Emma will uh, advance to the next uh, round of competition. And they do have an alternate in case Emma gets sick or anything like that, but we know Emma's gonna uh, stay healthy. Uh, she's very confident, um, but each time Emma has an opportunity to pre uh, present her speech, it just helps her with practice. So I invited uh, Emma tonight to uh, present her speech to the board members. And this year's theme was discovering the optimism within me. So Emma, the floor is yours. Discovering the optimism within me. Discovering the optimism within me isn't just for me. It's for others as well. And they're the ones that bring it out and make it grow. I have been blessed with many sources which encourage me to have optimism in my life, including friends and family, my two older siblings, my parents, my grandparents, my close friends and myself are really good examples of optimism. Also, William Makepeace Thackeray once said, a good laugh is sunshine in the house. My two older siblings, although they may pick on me a lot, they love to encourage me when I feel down in the dead spell somewhere. Not only do they encourage me they encourage others and stay away from that energy. They are the light to my world. My parents have really good optimism as well. Even though they work hard all day, they are still able to keep a good attitude. They love to support me and my siblings in what we love. For example, they support me in art and math. Myself. <coughs> Myself is one of the hardest things to talk about, but I shall give it a try. When I signed up for the speech, I could have never imagined the journey I would go on. You see, I had forgotten all about the speech. Then the weekend before, 
I remember. I rushed and got it done. That day, before I finished my speech, I looked to myself while looking in the mirror. You can do this. And I finished. My, my lesson to you is to stand strong against all the pessimism in the world. Because things are going to come your way, and you cannot let them knock you down. My grandparents have some of the best optimism I've seen in a while. They give me and my siblings advice and life lessons. Especially life lessons. <laughs> I love those two optimists with all of my heart. My friends are some of the best sources for positivity. Optimism. They love to encourage they love to encourage me to do things out of my comfort zone. But you don't find optimism. It finds you. At the right place, in the right time, with the right people. Only the right people deserve your optimism. As a matter of fact, the only people I give my optimism to are my friends and family. Who do you give your optimism to? Now, a quote from Helen Keller. The most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt by the heart. So there you have it. My optimism can be found in many different ways, including my friends and family. And they are also the ones that nurture and make you proud. In closing, Harry S. Truman once said, a pessimist is one who makes difficulties of his opportunities, and an optimist is one who makes opportunities of his difficulties. Great job, Emma. I know you're, only, I know you're going to get better, but I know you have one of these already because you're on my superintendent's advisory board. But you get another one for placing first in the audience and the oratorical contest. So, congratulations. and listen to, to the remainder of our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you may take this opportunity. <laughs> So caring to others and receiving the character award. Pictured here, we have Araya Edgeworth, Lily Norris, Noah Frisky, Maddie Walden, and Miss Katie Vaughn. From Dade Elementary, uh, showing being caring to others, we have Miss Bonnie Dor Bonnie Dorwachter, Ava Trotman, and Isabella Morland. From Day Middle School, shout out to these individuals. We have Miss Meadow Powers, Landon Payne, and Miss Natalie Burchett. And then from the high school, congratulations, shout out to all of these, starting from left to right. Uh, we have Miss Jennifer Clark, Katie Barger, Jasmine Blevins, Jersey Crabtree, <coughs> Mickey Cutshaw, Emma Hartline, Elena Hawkins. Alex Kidd, Cheyenne York, and Jordan Moore. So congratulations to all of those individuals for demonstrating the character word for the, for the month of February. And that concludes my report. We'll move on to department reports. And first under department reports, we have Tanner Bradford. So Tanner, you come on up. Oh. As you're making your way, I will let the board know that Pre-K registration is now open. Uh, I'll have a report for you for the next board meeting uh, to give you an update on some numbers. The registration process is all online. Parents can upload the documents, uh, but they can also uh, come here to the central office as well. 
So uh, two essential pieces of equipment for our network will be reaching in the wall <coughs> towards the end of this year. So it, that is the firewall that helps monitor and block web traffic to protect us from the outside world. I recommend purchasing two Fortinet firewalls that come with a three-year threat protection and support for 40,000 each. And they don't reach in the wild for five to seven years. So should be good there. And then also have the add to panels. We received a $100,000 grant from Rural Education Initiative and we would like to purchase 36 active panels with that money, but also purchase an additional eight boards that will be used at DMS. Two at Davis, eight at DMS, and 34 at the hospital to replace the old active panels, or uh, for making boards. So what happened on, with the active panels is, we began an installation process at Dade County High School, uh, in six, basically on the science hall and maybe a couple math rooms. So that tech, with that hundred thousand dollar technology grant, we'll finish out uh, the installation process at the high school, at Dade Middle School, and a, two classrooms at Davis. Um, there's uh, they have uh, classes upstairs above them, and anytime there's movement. Uh, above those classrooms, the projectors shake, so we'll essentially remove uh, those projectors and replace and replace the boards with, with the active panels. I think there's eight classrooms at uh, Middle School, Bay Middle, and two at Davis. The active panels are so much clearer and user friendly. Do we have a plan to replace all the Promethean boards? Eventually, the Promethean boards have. We've had the Promethean boards for about 15 years. Yeah. Um, so we jumped on this opportunity to to apply for this grant, and so once we get the hundred, you know, that hundred thousand, that's pretty much going to finish out the high school. So we'll slowly start phasing phasing these in. Yeah. And the black expectancy was. Uh, the life expectancy is fifty thousand hours on the back lots, and the projectors that we have now that. Cost anywhere from five hundred to a thousand, or only ten thousand dollars. The thing about the projectors is the projectors do not have an automatic shut off. Yes, so they the stay on all night, maybe all weekend sometimes. These can be shut off, and these boards don't require the teachers to kill the lights as well, right? Right. I mean, yeah, there must not be some pretty good right now. It's basically, the you have to kill at least two rows of lights for the teachers to be able to use them because the projectors aren't bright enough. Yeah.
Thank you, rates for five years. Five years. Yeah. So we get so much money for those five years, and then after that, it's going to the next round. So we have three more years before we can apply for it again. So we used all of our five-year rate money in two years. So, I, I, I think that's right. We'll, we'll have enough to do the uh, so much of the internet through TDN or who, TDN won the bid, or that's who we picked this year. So there's so much left to pay for that. But then after that, it's all gone. Ms. Patrice Witt here from Day County High School. Uh, Ms. Witt spent a day at the Capitol uh, last week. So, let's we'll hear from Ms. Witt. First of all, I want to say that it's an honor to serve this community as an educator. Um, I couldn't be in a happier place. I couldn't be in a better place. I've taught so many, well, a couple kids up here, <laughs> board members, and I wouldn't had it any other way as far as teaching in day. Um, Mr. Engel asked me to tell you guys a little bit about what SCCLA is, and since it was formerly known as Future Homemakers of America, I thought that I would show you the uh, flyer that we entered into the legislator contest at the state capitol when we went, and I'm pleased to tell you that we were in the top six in the state with our flyer, our students designed it, so they were able to use tech skills and research, um, what FCCLA means and need to learn more about it. But if you graduated high school after 1999, the term SCCLA won't probably ring a bell. So it's Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. So it used to be future homemakers of America, and now homemakers are so much more. <laughs> all about family, all about career and community. So, and we took 13 of our members, and they got to see uh, the state council for the first time. None of them had ever been in. So here's a picture that we were able to take with Governor Kemp, which was amazing in itself. But I'll tell you, our local congressman, we got to touch base with two, and uh, Georgia House of Representatives member Mike Cameron. He just went on and on about Dade County and just all the community service outreach that our individual FCCLA chapter has been able to do. The projects are listed on the bottom left-hand portion of uh, this flyer. We've served elderly people. We helped with the Helping Hands Ending Hunger Program. Um, we helped a little bit with the overpopulation pet project when they showed free puppies at the high school. We had members that helped with that and then community service and clean up. Uh, so Governor, uh, I mean, Representative Mike Cameron was just impressed with all the community service. Um, but Colton Moore, he took us behind the scenes. He took us in places we might not otherwise been able to go, and he showed us how a bill was passed, and he pulled a bill out of his desk, and he held it up, and he showed him the name, and he showed when it uh, if something was shot through, what that meant, if it was underlined, what that meant, and what made it even more meaningful right after that, the House of Representatives was in session. So he walked us right over, even he's on the Senate side, he walked us right over and we sat in the gallery and got to watch like two other bills be passed. And something that kind of touched me that day was one little girl that's interested in going into linguistics. She said, what do you have to do to come here and work? like as some of the younger members. So she, her eyes were just opened up. All of them's eyes were really opened up that day. But we got some special treatment from Colton Moore. We were, we were very, very thankful for him and what he did for us that day, as well as Mike Cameron and being able to meet the governor, which is such an awesome experience. Um, also wanted to talk a little bit about, it's not the state capitol day, but we had uh, two students um, Candace Black and Heidi Maldonado that went to a culinary challenge at NASA in Huntsville and they cooked in a culinary kitchen for the first time ever. Uh, we're not really a culinary program. Uh, the pathway we teach at Day County is nutrition and food science, but we stepped out and we dove in and they did fabulous. We test tasted our recipe a couple days before at the school and it was even gluten-free, which I think once we got to NASA, they were like, oh, because that's such a big 
thing nowadays and, and more people are affected by that. But their experience of, of going, and they sat, their suit was judged by 18 judges. 18, so they were a little overwhelmed when they first saw it. Uh, all the judges sitting there, and they had to speak. So uh, she was here, she was there, Miss uh, Hill was there when we, when we were there, and it was just, it was incredible to see them speaking in front of 18 judges among a lot of other people. It wasn't just the judges. Um, let's see, I wanted to uh, touch base on how many kids we've had to compete. There are no more pictures, but I'm gonna talk for just a couple of minutes. We recently had two students compete in ring gold at the regional events that placed high, uh, they scored high enough to go to state. Ivy Knopfley with her entrepreneurship and her Hannah Art bringing cultural awareness to just the art community or the Dade County community, surrounding communities in general. So she qualified, she placed first and she now gets to compete in the state of Georgia, and if she places in the top two in Georgia, she'll go to nationals in, in uh, Colorado this summer. And then Bella Johnson entered a category called Repurpose and Design, where she took what otherwise might be known as trash and uh, tied in her love of mental health awareness and did just an amazing project. She also qualified for state. So 16 uh, competitive events so far. Uh, this year, and that's not students, that's like events. I won't name them all, but it's neat to see them kind of tap into different things they're interested in and love. Because that's what it's all about, it's finding something they love. It's not, Miss Witt, what can I do? It's go, no, what do you already love? What can you tap into? How can you bring awareness and get that out in the community and, and so forth? So, um, and a couple of other things. We do teach the nutrition and food science pathway for those of you, you guys probably all know, but I know some of you don't know. And it's just a three course, three sequence course. <clears throat> the first class is an overall nutrition and wellness. And the second class, they kind of learn how to go to nutri uh, learn nutrition from in, in utero all the way to elderly. And we raise a little fake kid in class and he gets a name or she gets a name and it becomes personal and uh, they learn what the child needs at different stages, and it's not just about food, it's overall health, how to be mental, how to have strong mental health, emotional health, of course, how to eat, eat healthier. And I think one of my biggest <coughs> uh, aha moments is when I heard a student say, Miss Witt didn't tell us, don't eat fast food, McDonald's is bad, Taco Bell is bad, don't go there, you know, she, this student actually said she showed us how to determine which meals at McDonald's, at Taco Bell, at Wendy's. We started in Dade County and then we went to restaurants in Chattanooga. Which ones are the healthier options? Because we're all gonna eat it at times. And so when this student wrote a paper and included that in there, she said she didn't just tell us not to do this, but to here are some options. That was very touching for me as a teacher. Um, and at the end of the third class, they all uh, get to take a food handler's test so they can go into the food industry and be uh, serve safe certified with the food handler certific certificate. And restaurant owners like to see that, even if your student's going off to college and they're just working fast food and they don't make it a career, they like to see it. And then a lot of them make it a career and they still like to see it because it's all about kitchen sanitation and kitchen safety, and you'll see those up even around here in, in Dade County. So I love what I do. If you can't tell already, and I just does anybody have any questions? Uh, real quick on these uh, two right here, if they if their soup is picked, what happens next? They go to Texas, <laughs> Houston, right? Mm -hmm. They go to Houston. So ten in the entire nation <coughs> are chosen. So is this, that was a national competition. So we're, we don't know yet, we're waiting, and uh, we should be hearing the first part of March. So they're very eager every day. Like, Have you heard? Do you know yet? They're, they're super excited about it. And I, 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 hope, it, I hope it does place. I, I would love to see them go to the next, next level uh, with that. But all these competitions are just really bringing out their inner selves. I mean, they're having to speak in front of people and they're having to prepare, they're having to dig deeper than they probably ever thought possible, um, even on the preparation, because they came up with this res this recipe. It was called Fiesta, Ch uh, Fiesta Chicken for the Soul. And then they even tied it in culturally. 
and uh, about wanting to have a taste of home for the astronauts. And that their speech portion was really strong. Unfortunately, the speech doesn't count. It's the recipe itself. I wish I wish they both <laughs> both counted. But uh, anyway, <coughs> any other questions? I'm curious on these statistics that the local chapter. Does that mean the chapter here? Is yes. Double? So Did the you? local the local wow. chapter uh, we served. Uh, this is my second year here at Day County, and I wish I wished it was about my 15th year here, but it, it's my second. And we served 35 uh, families. It, that number is probably a little higher now because we've increased the number of Helping Hands Ending Hunger program uh, that we're serving. But we've also partnered with the Senior Center uh, with getting the seniors different things that they need in the community and. We tend to, they tend to be more in low income families. They're not always low income families, but they tend to be the families that have the highest need. Um, so that was a, that's a project last year that we did that we're about to tap into again as this last nine weeks starts. And the Helping Hands Any Hunger is this year's project. Um, and our local chapter doubled from last year to this year. So that was, that was a huge accomplishment too, because it, COVID kind of caused it to, be very very small <laughs> the chapter to be very tiny and uh, I think I want to uh, oh any other questions um, one one of my favorite things on this whole flyer that you guys have is the rose in the top right hand corner the rose represents an SCCLA just the beauty in everyday living and I think that we all need to be reminded of the beauty in everyday living and again I think I mentioned this at the beginning, but we're the only student organization that that has the focus of family. And so that's um, two things that I really like that stand out, that, that, I, that I like. I like all the stuff on this flyer, but I love that we focus on family because that's the future. And then I love that phrase, beauty in everyday living, because we can get so busy that we forget about the beauty in everyday living. So. But thank you for allowing me to come and speak. It was an honor. I was so thankful when Mr. Engel asked me. I'm like, I'd love to rail my students and tell some things that they're doing in the classroom and outside the classroom. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What you're doing. <clears throat> Next, uh, at your desk, we have the 2022 uh, annual report. Uh, the annual report is something that we've been doing for a number of years. Uh, it is another tool that allows the board to monitor uh, the strategic plan. Uh, and the annual report, it aligns with our, perfectly with our strategic plan. But I do want, uh, I do want to uh, make a note that this year's annual report uh, is dedicated in memory of Larry Moore for his endless support and dedication to the Dade County School System. And this photo was taken up there at Moore Lake. So um, I was gonna try to have uh, Miss uh, Mary to be here tonight, present her a copy of the annual report, but we'll sign one later and we'll take it, drop it by uh, for her at the, at the funeral home. But on the inside of the annual, uh, annual report, um, of course, there's a letter from the superintendent, but flipping on over to the next page, that's where it gets into the meat uh, of, of uh, what's in, uh, inside our strategic plan. This is our, our numbers, our performance on uh, how we <coughs> did in academics, our graduation rate, uh, how much uh, money was awarded in scholarships. The next page uh, talks about employee, you know, Another section on our strategic plans on employee development. This is a breakdown of how many uh, our staff members have a master's degree, bachelor's degree, specialist, and a doctorate. And then, of course, the center of that page is uh, our annual <coughs> financials. And the annual report is on a calendar year, but our school district, we operate on a, on our, on a fiscal year from July 1 to June 30th. And then, uh, it's broken down by each uh, each one of our schools, and they focus on academics, uh, activities, parent engagement, uh, and, stu and student focused. And it gives the highlights of each one of our schools. And then on on in here, uh, it's broken down 
uh, or we talk about the, we talk about academics, then we get into the athletics uh, and highlight uh, what's taking place in the athletics, and then we get into the, uh, the arts, the fine arts and the performing arts. So a lot of good information in here um, today. Uh, we mailed some out to our representatives. Uh, and we'll be hand delivering some of these to the uh, Alliance for Day, our uh, local chamber <coughs> of commerce. We'll take some to the commission uh, commission uh, office. But this is hot off the press. Our 2022 annual report. So it's your copy to take with you. Chief is handing out our speech studies that we did on uh, the first of or on the we started on the seventeenth of August. And we when we did, a little bit about me and our company. I'm a former police officer, I was a motor officer, an accident reconstructionist. Uh, our company is based out of Chattanooga. We have about two hundred and twenty-five years of experience in law enforcement. We cover Georgia, Tennessee, that's my two states. We have Virginia, uh, Louisiana, Iowa, and Washington, Oregon has just come on board. So what we do, and before I start, in the state of Georgia right now, we've got Savannah, Chatham County, that big, South Florida, and all the way to Ringo. We've got speeding down in the school zones, 94.9%. So it's an effective program. Uh, we do it a little bit different. We use LIDAR. Is everybody familiar with the, the difference between a laser and a radar is? Okay, so a radar, if you're running radar, it shoots a cone out, it's going to get the fastest object and come back. We use fixed single beam LIDAR. So there is a, a the, the system will be pointing on the road and it measures time and distance. So so. I had uh, somebody call me the other day and said, hey, one of our constituents said they got the car in front of them. I said, you have a citation? He was like, yes. I said, you see the little red dot on? Yes. I said, that's where it is. You can't get the car in front of them. You can't get the car behind them. So that's, that's one thing that, that sets us apart. Another thing, <coughs> we do public information and education. The, the owner and founder of our company, Mark Hutchinson, was the first law enforcement liaison in the state of Tennessee. He actually worked for the, the Georgia Highway Safety Office also. But he wrote out click it or ticket and lose it, lose it, 1999. So we do this system like that. We want everybody to know four to six weeks prior that this is coming. Um, every time we open a new school in Savannah, Channel County area, we have the TV station come out and do a report. We have our own public information education person. We send stuff home with the kids, the water bill, the schools, however you guys want to do it. We make it as big as you want to make it. So with that, before, and then there's a 30-day warning period after that, 
And it, the speeding defined in, in the bill 4014-18 is 11 miles an hour over. So you have to be doing at least 46 miles an hour in that school zone before a citation will be issued. It only takes a picture of your license plate. It's a civil issue. There's no points on your driver's license, anything like that. Um, so we did a speed study, and this, oh, I did one, we use a radar box. We, we come and put it out in the August when the chief did. And out of a five day period, there was 23,981 <coughs> cars come between here from 7.30 in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a five day period. I thought that was a lot. How many more repeat that, please? 20, it's 23,981. <coughs> That's how many cars came through there. <coughs> out of those, you had 672 <coughs> were speeding, going at least 11 miles an hour. You can see in the morning at the bottom column, uh, out of the 3,802 that came through, you had 300 speeding. During the middle of the day, 16,000, you still had 178 speeding. And then in the afternoon, 3,856 cars, you still had 194 speeding. <coughs> if you look at the second page of this, in the pie chart, the blue is 11 to 14 over where most of your cars were. And then the next one is 15 to 20 over. And then the silver, you had 28 out of that 600 doing at least 21 miles an hour. So we took this in front of the council, uh, city council, they passed it, signed a contract. Georgia state law says that the superintendent must sign a permit so that they can go forward with using the automated school zone system. So, does anybody have any questions? Can you clarify again, is this you said something about the you said something about being a civil issue. Mm -hmm. That That's segment right. in there, I mean, is there a fine? There's a fine, yes, there's a fine. But the way Georgia has it set up, you have 60 days to pay the fine. If you don't pay it in 60 days, you have another 30 days to pay the fine. <coughs> if you don't pay it in that 30 days, then it goes to the Department of Revenue, which is five more days, and they'll put a lien on you uh, where you can't renew your tax. But there's no points off your insurance or nothing against your driving records. Totally Is the ticketed amount based on the speed? No, it's a set price by the state of Georgia. It's a hundred dollars for the first offense and one fifty for the second and subsequent offenses. And just out of curiosity, that that goes, I'm guessing, to the city. Yes, do a revenue share, I guess. It's not a hundred percent. No. No, but we, it doesn't cost the city anything to do the program. Right. Okay. First of all, we put it in just a lot of money. Sure. I did speak with our board attorney. Um, it, yes, it does require uh, our signature, as uh, which is currently uh, in Georgia law. But he, uh, our board attorney did inform me that he does anticipate this law changing, that they no longer will have to come before school boards or superintendents anymore, mm -hmm. they just they just do it. Yeah. So the city itself would do it. At least it's good to know. <laughs> what is the you know, after you know I, I sign whatever document needs to be signed and turn that over to you, <coughs> Chief Bowman, like what is the timeline of implementation? It could probably nine to fifteen months before it comes up because of this permitting we have to do everything with GDOT says. We have our own permitting department, so we have to make sure that the list of roads are updated that the Chief's got. We send those, we have to do a new update, and we have to get an engineering firm out here do an engineering traffic investigation. So, you know, we're, and we're just looking at the school zone between right here in front of high school. Yeah, just and, and here's another thing, too. And, and yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So we're doing the public information education. The Georgia state law says you have to have a flashing light and photo and force, right? So we go a step above and beyond that and put a radar feedback sign in each end. So you have three warnings before you cross the threshold. And you still have between three and 600 feet 
before you drive through the laser beam after you enter the school zone. So you have three warnings. You're going to have a flash of lights, a sign that says photo enforced, and a sign that says your speed is. So you've got three warnings before you go on that school zone. What, what caused all of this to come about? To, to have the city be looking at doing something like this? The tractor volume. Everything is getting off here in Trenton now instead of going through the split. The tractor trailer's like going over the, over the mountain now. We're having a lot of problems because we're on sidewalks. we got kids walking on the edge of the grass and speeding cars. So, and we got one officer that's tied up with school traffic. And you know, we're, we try to keep them aware of the schools, but we're having a lot of complaints of the speed here. So that would more or less give us another man that's monitoring this area to try to control the speed in this area. Okay, other than the complaints, have, have there been a lot of instances, incidents over the last year, in particular in the area that you're talking about, as far as like wrecks or, or well, yeah, anything like there's that? There's several wrecks we had right through here. They had a school one to get out. It's notorious right there. We turn on Oakwood Avenue and all that. So where exactly are you saying these, these spots would be put in relation to active? They would be in the school zone. We're, that we're, sign to the other sign, right? Yes, yes. You it's have G dot will determine all that. We, you know, we've got to go through their permitting process, so they determine all that. Is there a need to look at the other schools for this as well? That's the county. It's the, we're looking at the middle school. But right now they gotta give a detox and put a detox on that. We 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 yeah, we did all schools up. Yeah, yeah, we did. We just put up an armadillo out there just to see and put one on each side and yeah, over I think there's about thirty eight thousand cars through there and over sixty two hundred was going at least eleven over. And where was that on the Right middle of the It's not large. Oh the one thirty six. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Was th I, that was a I, I would think that this number would have been a lot higher, but it was almost double over there across the interstate. It's more here. It makes sense, sense over there because there's no schools on at all. Right. Right. It but the traffic volume was. Oh, you're talking. Yeah, about. the traffic volume was two times. Oh yeah, we need four lanes going like that. Yeah, and we just we just <laughs> based it off we just based it off the speed. <clears throat> and it was we just going 11 over with the speeds were marked, and there was over. I think 6,220 cars were in 11 over. So, you know, I'm very passionate about this. I got the best job in the world. I get to go out, help people save life every day. And you know, I have unfortunately worked at the Pataldi in a school zone. It wasn't a kid, but it was in the school zone during school time. And I even got run over in the mid 90s in the school zone directing traffic. As big, tall, and ugly as I am, with my orange coat, I still got run over directing traffic. Other than the signature formal, whatever, is there anything else that is supposed to be provided, finance, or anything as far as funds from the school system? No, completely free. Just to see. What we want to do is, you know, as much public information and education as we can and be partners with you guys. You know, we're in hopes we don't write that many tickets since, you know, we want to slow it down, but unfortunately, People are still spending every day. From sign to sign, it's relatively, uh, it's relatively short. Uh, yeah, that's that again. G dot will come out and measure that and see where everything will go and how they dictate to where we have to put everything. So, is there a chance that they would widen the uh, already school zone or no? That would be up to them. I can't really. I can't speak. I don't know who determined that in the beginning. Was G dot, G dot. <coughs> 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 Have you spoke to the county at all in regards to doing anything elsewhere or just They're the city because Yeah, I, I spoke to uh, Tommy, Tommy and, and, and the sheriff, yes. Yeah, I spoke to both of them. We were that much from there with Tommy. Mm -hmm. <coughs>
of our fiscal year. <coughs> Excuse me. Our first section is our revenue. Um, our Avalorum tax and our TABT tax, we have seen an increase from January of 22 to January of 23. Um, total revenue, we've collected $13,488,385.11. The majority of that has come from our QBE, which is our state and local funding. For our revenue, our expenditures, I apologize, we've expended $11,322,424.11. And again, the majority of that is for our instruction, a little over 70%. So as a recap, um, our beginning balance was $6,573,456.70. We've collected in revenue $13,488,000. And our total expenditures, $11,322,424.11, leaving our general fund balance um, as of January 31st, 2023, $8,739,417.70. Our next report is our squash expenditures. And again, we've completed 58.33% of our fiscal year. In squash five, our previous month's balance was $2,104,258.35. We earned $274.14 in interest. We have outstanding checks for $448, leaving the Splash 5 balance of $2,104,084.49. In Splash 6, our previous month's balance was $2,845,453.68. We earned $243.38 in interest. Our sales tax distribution for Splash 6 was $312,367.89, and leaving a balance in Splash 6 of $3,158,064.95. Um, our Interpad account, that's also a part of Splash 6, our previous month's balance was $500,703.08. <coughs> We earned $127.57 in interest, leaving us with a balance of $500,830.65. Uh, the next section is just a monthly comparison of our revenue. Um, and from fiscal year 21 to 22, and then from 22 to 23, we've had an increase in collections. And then the last section that you'll have is a monthly and a year to date broken down by facility. Moving to the last report is our grants. Again, we've completed 58.33% of our fiscal year, and we've expended roughly 46.26% of our grants. So we're right on track. <coughs> and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Can you say about this one? Lauren does, doesn't know I'm going to do this, but I am going to present her with a superintendent pen of excellence. She just went through her first audit. Um, she was trained by one of uh, one of the best, Ms. Paula Stallings. Um, but over the last uh, several months, she has spent many, many hours on the phone with Parrish and uh, Chris, our two auditors. And once we got that notification that our exit interview was okay to, uh, they didn't have to come here to do our exit interview. It was good, they were good to do it on Zoom. That said a lot to, to me as a superintendent that she took very good care of uh, the our accounting uh, principles. So congratulations. Thank you. Yes. yes thank you.
So I recommend the board approve the monthly financials and general fund report as presented. Thank you. I hear a motion to approve the monthly financials and general report. We spent a million dollars of CARES 3 so far this year, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. So it stands to reason that before the end of FY23, that's likely going to be gone or not much left. Well, this next year, uh -huh. it's yeah. supposed to go away. Yeah, it's supposed to go away. That's fine. I was just trying to see how long we had. That's, that's all I was looking at. Not long. Not long. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> I appreciate it. <coughs> active panels from CDWG, uh, which will include on-site support uh, and an extended service agreement. The total cost is $121,910.36. And in addition, CDWG, they are part of the state bid contract list, so we are getting the best price. If we shop around, we're going to beat that price. So uh, 36 of these boards will be paid for uh, from the hundred thousand dollar technology, <coughs> and the remaining would be coming from supplies. That's only twenty. What for twenty one thousand? Twenty one thousand. Yeah, twenty one thousand nine hundred ten dollars. Oh, I do. I have <coughs> a motion to approve the monthly financials and general purchase of the county vehicle not to exceed 40000 from the state bid contract list. These vehicles are used by curricular <coughs> folks, CPA folks, fine art folks. Matter of fact, when um, Ms. Witt was here just a moment ago, she went to Huntsville last week in one of the cars. She we only had two kids going, uh, so it was her and two, you know, those two students. Um, you know, we had to take a bus. Now we're talking wearing down a bus and salary of a bus driver uh, there and back, plus the bus driver's uh, food expenses. Um, I think uh, one, one question came up, how often do these uh, are these used? Cynthia can attest that we really don't have enough. Uh, they, they stay booked. And what we do, we have a procedure where if anybody needs a car, uh, they contact central office and it's um, it's put on the calendar who's getting it and where they're going. And if we have somebody else that's needing to um, travel further, we then bump them off the list and put whoever's traveling further in the county car because it um, it, it just saves them a the long run. <coughs> the the, the mile is mile, 61 cents a mile. Right. We're paying somebody to drive. Uh, to, to Savannah as opposed to paying somebody to drive to Rome, Teresa. 
it, it makes sense to put the person going to the Savannah in the county vehicle and reimburse the individual going to run. At, so, at what point, um, I know mileage was the question that I came up, at what point is the intended um, time frame for replacing the two that we have? <coughs> uh, as far as for like seven years, seven years is uh, is a recommended length of time for on as far as our capital uh, at capital assets. <coughs> Everyone has to go in because they're on our capital assets. She'll have to do a um, uh, calculate the depreciated value, and um, once once it gets to a point where um, we can remove it, then we can sell it on on gov deals. Now we, um, the Kia has 115,000 miles. Uh, the Kia has also been uh, in an accident uh, early on uh, when we first uh, purchased it. Um, <coughs> it's a, and then we, you know, between Patty and Kristen, and uh, for, well, particularly Kristen, uh, making home visits, she's been rather than uh, transporting uh, or making visits uh, to home in a <coughs> personal car. If she has a lot of times when she does go to a home, she ends up having to bring a kid to school. So rather than trans, uh, transporting them in a personal car, if we have a county vehicle, um, that's not a, a liability risk that she uh, takes on herself. I'm just wonder for the price of used cars, the way they are, if we couldn't go ahead and potentially that be a part of being able to go with the most miles. Get some and then put that, put put that towards. Well, that's going to come down to the depreciated value at, uh, on the on our capital asset list. Are they on a five-year depreciation, or you said seven years? Well, the, our auditors tell us anywhere between five and ten years. Yeah. If we do it too early, um, they will encourage us. They <coughs> consider, you know, don't go ten years. Maybe hit plan somewhere in the measure. Is that the vehicle that we're talking about? I'm sorry. So that is, the, yes, that is the actual vehicle uh, that is on hold. And it says that it's all-wheel drive, which I appreciate. Uh, all-wheel drive. It's the, uh, when Amy called <coughs> it, it's the most base government uh, model. I wanted something that has three, third row seating. Uh, we'll put a uh, trailer hitch on the back um, and some roof rails so that, uh, <coughs> like our, help occupation people. A lot of times when she goes to Athens, she'll have five or six people. And she uses her own personal uh, cargo carrier. Yeah. To, uh, and then I've got a cargo tray. Anybody can welcome to use. Um, but if we're, if we're not having to pay a driver, a bus driver, um, no, it's, it's, a, it's an asset for sure. What model is that? It's 2023. So at this point, we're adding two complete. Yes. Not replacing currently. Correct. But are we headed toward um, a routine replacement kind of piece? And what is that number that we would think about? There's not, there hasn't been a particular number. The, the miles are about <coughs> 70,000 miles. Um, <coughs> the concern with the Kia is the fact that it has been in an auto accident. Um, and so putting, you know, putting kids uh, in, in the key and sending them to, to Athens, it makes me, <coughs> makes me nervous now. Um, so would you take that one in? It would keep it local and local. trips to, um, from Trenton to Rome, to Risa, uh, but these further trips, uh, we use them over. But, but they rotate out based on age <coughs> and mileage or just based on? But, these are the only two that we've had. These are the first two we've ever had. So, so we might establish protocols yeah. that they at a certain. We'll establish mileage. a procedure on how we want to rotate those. The Mazda only has; it does not have a third row seat. So we're limited as to how many students we can transport. It would be great to get to a number that we feel like at this point in, in the district five, it, it makes yep. sense to have that number. Well, for a couple of years there, we didn't do any traveling, and they sat and the miles didn't add up because. Of and everything went virtual. But now that these uh, CTSOs <coughs> are kicking back up, we're starting to see a lot more trouble. I like it. I like, do I hear a motion?
motion to accept the recommendation for the I recommend the board approve Cherokee Mechanicals base bid price of $1,274,000 for the HVAC project at Dade Elementary School. There's two buildings we're talking about here. Um, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but I refer to them as the first, second, third grade building and then the fourth and fifth grade building. Uh, the first, second, third grade building have PTAC units in each of the rooms. And then in the fourth and fifth grade building, those are the bar units. <coughs> uh, so I'm, I'm recommending the board approve the uh, Cherokee McCunkles uh, base bid price at $1,274,000. Uh, and I'll also remind you that we do have $895,000 budgeted in ESSER to take care of this uh, to cover the expenses, and then the difference would be uh, would come from supplies. If we use capital outlay, we would only be eligible for uh, two hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars, and so the difference would be supplies. So we're coming out much better uh, taking care of this project through us. Yeah. How much did you say was Eight hundred ninety-five thousand in Tesser. So three seventy-nine. You're saying from from Splash at that point. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it was capital outlay, it would be we would get two hundred ninety-nine thousand from the state. And so we have to pay one hundred seventy thousand. No, subtract two ninety-nine from one point two seven four. They all must be. They all must be. We like this. And because we have a timeline on this, this will allow us to extend those funds yeah. before they come. Were they the only bidder? Yes, they were. Kim, do you want to talk about the lead times on the, on the units? Yeah. <coughs> I'll make a address on that other day. Unfortunately, the state doesn't let you double dip and use capital outlay and ESSER. They're very strict about that. But um, as far as the one bidder goes, you know, once everyone kind of jumped on board using ESSER funds for air quality, as in roofing HVAC, the market's just flooded in Georgia with roofing HVAC projects. So that's why we really only got one. We reached out to everyone we knew mechanical contractors. Um, we had several show up, but they were the only ones that turned in. We even called a couple on site the day of the previous meeting. Does that come with new roof curve and all? Well, we're only replacing two rooftop units. Most of these are all home. Like I said, the, the bar unit. Yeah, the 20, 21 and Bell name is the uh, it's all bars, and the other ones are PTAC, the ones that are down low, there's two in the classroom. The lead time on these, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's because everybody's in line to buy this equipment, so it'll probably be um, close to Christmas before we're finished. So they'll get in. We're locked in at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They'll get in this summer and run a gas line. So, long story short, we ended up running gas to the bar units because the new units, the power parts for the new units, um, was greater than what was available. So instead of having to replace panels, replace wires, replace circuits, the rain gas over there, which brought the electrical load down, and actually eats a lot better anyway. So that saved money there, but we had to trade the money for the gas line. 
but yes, you're locked in at that. There's no price increases allowed in the contract. And if you're approved, it, the first thing they're going to do is send us the shop drawings and we'll check and make sure they're right and then they'll get in line. Like I said, they'll probably be close to Christmas um, by the time they finish. And they understand per the project requirements, they have to work nights, weekends, and holidays. Um, Let's say if it works out that it's during the Christmas break, that'd be ideal, right? Yeah, or you know, sometime in the fall. They'll, they'll come in. These are luckily most works on the outside, taking yeah. it off, putting it in. They will have to get above the ceiling this summer and make a new connection and run a new wire down to where the new disconnect will be on the outside of the building. So they're going to get all the prep work done this summer. And whatever the units get there, they'll be able to start. You know, they may do one to two days in the afternoon. It's, it's up to them. Is this going to add uh, units in the hallway on the fourth and fifth at all? Because I know that was it. Is that the. We've looked at that before. It's fourth and fifth. So that's DE Hall. That's the left side. Um, I don't think. I think this is just the. Just the classroom units. The other, the other wing, the uh, HIJK wing, there's two rooftops there because there's two classrooms that don't have enough wall space to have two of the, I've got these backwards, I'm sorry. Those are the ones with the PTAC units. So there's two classrooms there that don't have an exterior wall that have two PTACs. So those two currently have rooftop units and they'll come off and be replaced. And then there's an administration area over there that has a split system on it, you know, an area where above the ceiling in the office space and the, and it's going up on the roof. But mostly it's wall home units and through wall units. And we worked with here before. We're actually working with them right now on our job. And they're, they're really good. So I was happy that they did turn in. Any other questions? Just a side note. Um, how much longer do we have for Astro Funds? It sunsets uh, FY 24. Yeah, <coughs> three, and we So we'll just spend another year. Which, if it's, I'm trying to do the math, if it's costing us three million a year to reuse an investor, then, um, because after Esther gone, general fund's got to pick up slack, which is at 8.7 right now. So if it's at nine, when it leaves, it leaves us about three years to figure out what more, more paper stuff there. Yeah. Just making sure I'm getting this one. We have a motion to accept that recommendation uh, for Chair King to be second. All in favor?